Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor lawyer turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 11, seven, and six. In today's video, I am finally showing you a flip through of lighting literature and composition for grade two by Hewitt Homeschooling. Before I get into this, I just wanna say if you are interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD and living a more essentialist life, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. I try to do lots of videos on curriculum flip throughs for you, and I try to make my videos as useful as possible to a secular homeschooler, but I do not stay strictly secular. Now, Hewitt Homeschooling is not a secular company, but all the lightning literature levels I have used thus far have been entirely secular. Now, Hewitt Homeschooling actually sent me grade two and grade five of lightning literature this year in exchange for my honest review. However, I have purchased grades one, grade three, and grade four all on my own, and those reviews are also in my language arts playlist linked below. So check those out if you're interested in those grades. Now, my seven-year-old will actually be using the grade two. She's a hybrid second grader, third grader. In literature, she's definitely more of a grade two type of student than a grade three. However, in math and science, she's more of a grade three. So that's one of the best things about homeschooling. You can really like customize where your child is and what materials you use for them. I find lightning literature to be very on grade level for a strong reader. If you have a weaker reader, you can definitely read with them or read alongside them. The teacher's guide totally accounts for this possibility. However, I feel like the student workbook can be a little bit difficult for children to do if they're not a strong reader. Now, before I get into them, I just want to show you a really quick flip through of the teacher's guide versus the student workbook. Some people can see the teacher's guide and be very intimidated by the program because it is a very text heavy teacher's guide, as you can see. There is a lot of text. It is very organized. It is organized by week, as you can see at the top, but there is quite a bit of text and you don't have to read all of it, but it really depends on how much handholding you want for your program. And I'll go through that in specificity in a minute. People ask often if the teacher's guide is necessary in a curriculum and with lightning literature, it definitely is because it contains all of your writing and composition assignments and how those are broken down. It also contains a lot of discussion questions and answers to the workbook pages, but the essential part of it, I would say, is the writing and composition assignments because if you didn't get it, you wouldn't have that at all in the student workbook. The student workbook mainly contains the grammar activities. Now, as you can see with a quick flip through, the student workbook is not nearly as text heavy as the teacher's guide. So it looks very, very different than the teacher's guide. It's very appealing. I really like that the newer editions come three hole punched for you already. And the pages are perforated so you can actually tear them out very easily if you wanted to put them into a uh, three ring binder for your student. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the teacher's guide so that you can see how it's arranged. If you've used previous levels of lightning literature, you can see that the teacher's guide is very similar um, to all of those past ones. When you open the book, you have a clear table of contents that's organized from weeks one through week 36. So this is designed as a 36 week program. Sometimes you will have a book that extends over more than one week. For example, the boxcar children extends from weeks 26 all the way through weeks 28. But other other books will just be one week, like here the Polar Express is just week 15. Before I go further into the teacher's guide, I just thought I'd show you some of the books that are included in this level. So you have My Father's Dragon, A Mouse Called Wolf, The Bears on Hemlock Mountain, Boxcar Children, Mr. Popper's Penguins, The Patchwork Quilt, The Old Woman Who Named Things, Many Moons, 26 Fairmont Avenue, Teddy, the story of young Teddy Roosevelt, The Enormous Crocodile by Roald Dahl, Anatoly, Sam Bangs and Moonshine, La Mariposa, Max's Words, Snowflake Bentley, and The Three Questions. I showed you several of the books that are included, however, I have not yet received my insect detective and the random house book of poetry for children is downstairs because it's actually included in several levels of lightning literature and so we've been using it for the other levels as well that's a great book of poetry if you're just looking for a book of poetry for kids by the way i think i reviewed it in my poetry tea time video which i will try to remember to link in the description box down below 
One of the things about literature-based programs is that sometimes you will have an objection to one or two of the books. For example, in Lightning Literature Level 1, there was a few books which I found not appropriate for my children because I didn't like the tone um, that the books took in terms of race relations and just cultural sensitivity. And so I decided to omit those from our curriculum. I would encourage you when you look at a literature-based curriculum, if you have a particular problem with one or two of the books, the curriculum can still hold as a whole simply by omitting those books or replacing them with something else. And you will be able to figure out a way to do that pretty easily with this book because the composition assignments relate to the style of the book often. So for example, if in the book they talk about letter writing and it's about a child writing letters, the composition assignments might be to write a letter. If you didn't like that particular book that was selected in Lightning Literature, you could easily find another book that illustrates letter writing and use that in place of the reading selection they have. That being said, I have really enjoyed the vast majority of the literature selected by the Lightning Literature program. And not every book is going to work for every family, and that is okay. And that is part of learning to look at books critically and something to talk about with your kids too. It's a great opportunity to just be open about that. After the table of contents, there is an extensive how to use the teacher's guide section. Now, one of the things I like about Lightning Literature is it definitely acknowledges that kids are at different levels, regardless of being called a grade two or a grade three student. They are at different levels. Often they can read better than their grammar skills would allow, or their grammar skills are better than their reading skills would suggest. And to tailor that to your own kid really is up to you. The course, however, is designed as a four-day course over 36 weeks, which means that all of the day's assignments are listed out by week, by day. So if you looked at week one at a glance, you would see the books for the week, how much of the reading you're going to do, any optional materials, what the grammar and mechanics will cover, and what the composition assignment is. The explanation of the teacher's guide gets into the details of how this is arranged, and I'll leave that up to you guys to read. But I wanted to show you one week as an example. So you have here day one, and you have the question, and then the answer in parentheses here. And they leave a blank area for you to record your own responses. So if you were a Charlotte Mason homeschooler, for example, and you wanted to keep an a record of their oral narration, you can. Then you have a grammar and mechanics section. The teacher section really tells you like what that grammar and mechanics is about and why she's introducing it. They give you some information about how to reinforce the concepts, how to go through the answers to the workbook page. So I'm gonna show you the workbook page now for week one for what your student would see. When you open the student workbook, again, you see the table of contents that lists out clearly what the books are for the week. And week one starts with day one. So this is the entire workbook page for grammar and mechanics for day one. And it's just working on alphabetical order. So you're putting these three words into alphabetical order, these three, and then these four. The answers to that page are right here for the parent to see. And then you have a composition assignment. And they have given you a choice here. Either they can start their own list of words and dictionary pages, very similar to the character in Max's words, the book for the week, or they can write a short story that starts with the line at the end of the book, once there was a big brown dog. So it folds in the reading book for the week and gives you a composition activity based on that. So the book acts as a launching point for the composition activity. And then at day two, you have a discussion of the different story elements. So story, character, setting, external details, internal details, and conflict. This is designed to be a guideline for helping you have an oral discussion with your child about the book at the end. Then you have, for day two, the answers to the workbook page there, and I'm gonna show you again in the student guide what you see. So you can see here some clear instructions, an example, and then they reinforce what they learned about alphabetical order here. You have a reading journal activity. Now we actually never fill this out in the book, uh, but I do like that they provide you with these lined composition size lines if you don't have a composition notebook of your own. We simply do this page in our own composition book and it acts as a book review at the end of every single book we read. So she'll write down the title, she'll write down the author, she'll give it a rating, and then she'll answer basically these questions. For day three here, you have, again, a very simple, very concise activity 
where you're trying to put the sentences in correct order. All of these sentences come out of the book that they just read, so they can refer back to that if they want, but they can also work on the fact that you're gonna have capital letters at the beginning and periods at the end, etc. Here you have word order for day four's grammar assignment. When you move into week two, you have a full page picture indicating the shift. You have one page for day one, a page for day two, your reading journal pages, word order in day three, and an exercise on possessive nouns for week four, and so on and so forth. Before I get back into the teacher guide, I'm just gonna give you an overview of what the student pages look like. You can tell that we're reinforcing many of the same skills that come in a different book, like end punctuation or diagramming sentences. You continue the reading journal activity all the way throughout. You often look back at the reading that you just did and try to figure out what the missing words are or the order of sentences. There is diagramming sentences with adjectives. Here you have quotation marks. You can tell this is just five short problems to reinforce the skill. So I really appreciate that the workbook pages are not extensive, that they're very manageable, very age appropriate, very colorful and varied. After the first seven weeks at week eight, you have your first section on poetry and this is scattered throughout the year. If you go back to the table of contents, you can see that week eight includes the Random House Book of Poetry for Children, week 16 includes it, week 25, and then week 33. So you have four weeks of poetry interspersed throughout the other reading books for the year. I'm gonna give you a quick flip through of the book so you can see how it's organized. Very manageable, very age appropriate. If you compare the activities at the beginning of the book with the activities at the end, you can see that you do have more text on the page, which should correlate to your child's increasing competence in grammar. At the very end of the book, you have these dictionary pages that your student can use to make their word lists. Now getting back into the teacher's guide, you can see here that day two has that discussion of literary elements and the answers to the workbook page and the composition assignment has the two different composition assignments depending on what your student chose to do. So it tells you to reread the story, discuss something with your child about the characters, and then think of a second character for the story and make notes about what conflict they might wanna talk about. So you can see that every single composition assignment is bite-sized and very doable. They give you lots of different examples. So if your child doesn't have an idea of what they wanna write or what categories they wanna use, they give you that information there. It reminds you to do the reading journal pages and then it goes into the literature questions. Again, on day three, the grammar and mechanics and the composition assignment. So again, here you have a rough draft of their paper. They can do that on scratch paper, it says, and then you just use your composition book for your final draft. With my students, I often let them type it if they would prefer to do that. So for my son especially, who doesn't like writing out extensive stories, he just types it. And as soon as I let my son type out his stories, his enthusiasm for composition and writing just jumped. So definitely consider that if you have a child who's reluctant to write by hand. And then in day four, you're gonna begin reading chapter one of Winnie the Pooh here. This is unusual. Often you have one whole week for just one book, but here you are continuously reading Winnie the Pooh throughout. So for example, here in week two, you're gonna be reading The Old Woman Who Named Things as your picture book for the week, but then you're gonna read the last half of chapter one in Winnie the Pooh. And if you go forward 20, you can see here you're still reading Winnie the Pooh. So throughout the first weeks of the year, you are going to be reading a half a chapter of Winnie the Pooh and a picture book throughout the entire year. And I believe that week 21 is the first week where you start a new chapter book, which is Just So Stories. At week 21, the composition assignment is a research paper about any city in the world, which you might think is a lot for a second grader, but let me show you how they break it down. So the first day, it tells you what the assignment is. They choose the city and they write a list of questions about the city. They give you an example list of questions to brainstorm with your child. And that's it for that first day. The second day they do the research. So they find answers from the internet or books or whatever they want. And they will write between one and three paragraphs, depending on their ability and interest, 
focusing on the external description of their city. On the next day, they will write their rough draft so that you figure out how to organize that information and you write that rough draft. Don't do too much correction, it says. You want these to be your child's sentences, not yours. I like that lightning literature emphasizes that at this age, while we want to teach them structure in writing, we also want to preserve their own voice. We don't want to discourage them. We don't want to teach them that there's only one right way to express themselves. The next day, they complete their final draft. So over the course of the week, they do it. Now here it says if there's still a lot to do and it would be too stressful to complete the composition today, they can use tomorrow for this as well. Because remember, day five is free. And if they chose to do a research paper or a descriptive paper, it gives you different questions that you can review in their rough draft together. In every single week, they have a section called extending the lesson where they tell you other books or resources that you can use. It suggests that you learn more about New York City or objects and places mentioned in the book. Um, if you're creating a timeline for the class, you can add important dates from New York City's history. If you're curious about the sentence diagramming sections, they give you very clear answers in the teacher's guide, so you don't need to know how to sentence diagram in order to do this curricula. I like that they always give you the week at a glance so you know what materials you need. I like that they reproduce the actual workbook pages so you can see exactly how the student should have answered. And I like that they break up the composition assignments into bite-sized pieces for your student. So that was Lightning Literature and Composition for grade two. Now, if you have more questions about this curricula, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. I have been very happy with how my students respond to the book selections in Lightning Literature as well as to the grammar sheets. Now, as I mentioned, I do not follow the schedule in the teacher's guide. We generally will stack our grammar assignments. So we might do two or three of these pages in one day and then reserve that time for the composition assignment over the next few days. So we generally will do the grammar pages on Monday and Tuesday. We'll work on the composition assignment from Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and sometimes into the weekend, because I do not like to stress my students out with the writing portion of it. I really want them to you know, enjoy writing. I want them to feel inspired to write when they do. And then we do the book review part of it and move on to the next book. So sometimes we shift our weeks and start the next book on a Wednesday and that's totally fine with me. Again, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you for spending some of it with me and I wish you the very best day.